and so it looks like a going a might be a little bit wiser of the uh of the two choices but uh we'll kind of see what happens Crustle's getting taken down by chris they are going to be pushing see, in towards hard long. made a peek right on him from connector and didn't take the shot though yeah i mean it's well it's partially one of those things where if it, you know it, it's kind of heat of the moment sometimes it doesn't feel like it's a calculated risk like like it's one that you could successfully do but it looks like csr is able to get at least two picks there yeah. and even if monkey gets the trade and saber also going down to mcus not going to make much of a difference because i mean it still is a 2-2 and you are going against an op uh and an m4a1s here so obviously the the cts have a very very high threshold of long range uh, potential and the, the it, worst part is going to be tough was the worst Worst part about that was I'm pretty sure it was Brettley. He had the tech nine. Not only did he not take the shot as soon as he saw him kind of come out of connector, but he instantly oh, went taking out instantly there. went to long, um, and didn't wait for any more information to see. Oh, is he staying in connector? Has he rotated? He could have held an angle right on picnic and watched bathrooms because since that's where they wanted to go was a, he could have watched it, but. That's not what ended up happening, and it looks like that's going to cost them the round because CSR rotated into bathrooms with no no one having any information on where he really See, was. See, again, no lurkers. Kill. No lurkers, no... You know, if if, uh, if Void would have had just one player um, go into stairs, like kind of just lurk around B, kind of lurk around on uh, on T side of, uh, of Monster, almost by uh, the little nightclub thing around here, and literally just kind of waited things out or perhaps uh, by ladder, at that point... They could have made a huge difference because at least they would have been able to get, like you said, information. Mm -hmm. And uh, they could have flanked from stairs, prevented some of these uh, quick little pushes and picks here that Blue Dreams did. But, uh, like, Void was just not able to, like, get, have any of that and make any of those plays happen. Because, again, they just keep kind of pushing as a team. And it looks like this round is one of the few times where they're not. They're kind of uh, playing for picks, kind of seeing what happens. Uh <laughs> Macklin taking a shot. Macklin taking door. a shot through the door at the exact time. Uh, anyway, um, but a great shot there by Macklin. And let's you know, let's see. It, it's one of those things where. Uh, can UK uh, figure this out? We'll, right we'll here. see. Yeah, exactly. We'll see what they can do to figure it out. But they obviously oh, need to. <laughs> they need to change a few things up. I mean, uh, looks like Bird and Amkus are both going down here. Chris at least taking out Crussels, but. Um, We'll we'll see what uh, Void is able to do in the next uh, in the next few rounds um, before the half. But I just I think what really lost them all the momentum here is just no lurk, no checking angles. And when they do do it like this, um, it's 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 almost too late. You know what I mean? And it's just that you can't have your opper be the last player alive. You know, two or three times here yeah. in the first half like this. It just doesn't it doesn't compute and. And now he's going to be completely surrounded. They they obviously know where he is, or at least have a pretty good idea. Uh, they are peeking long, and you know he is he can hide all he wants in that bathroom corner. But uh, it's not. They have got to figure. Um, uh, Static Void's got to figure it out some other way. You know what do you think they can do here to try to uh, sort of counteract uh, Blue Dreams just waiting for on these angles and just consistently. Just not even, not even giving them a chance to bait, not even giving them a chance to do really anything because the executions are so quick. Well, the so the only thing that I've noticed that uh, Static Void has actually capitalized on is when they push onto a site is getting that opening pick normally. So if they can get that opening pick and just continue to sweep through the site and all the angles and smoke off things that you basically like, if you go into B, if you can smoke off Heaven, you can smoke off uh, uh, Graffiti, just completely just take that out of the equation you can clear the site you can get rid of all the things you know heaven and graffiti that people would be coming from and then of course have your one guy in sewers making sure you guys don't get flanked here so they're playing really aggressive on the blue dream side once again they got two people up here ink to connector and then one person only on sandbags right now but a is being they're sitting back on A. They're waiting for them. This is the first time they haven't pushed up into bathrooms and played aggressive. You know, Dino has a really good long uh, long angle, but is very susceptible to an op shot, slow peeking him, even from boost on long. Yeah, he, he's not. Yeah, I mean, they got they got to start capitalizing on kind of like you. I mean, look at the end of the day, you there's there's a there's a pretty stark and I think uh, you know very obvious difference between like be. having between having a lurker. And having uh, just split pushing and and uh, you know playing for picks, and yeah. they need to just have a lurker, but that's it. Wait so they can get a pick. You know, static. Uh, I mean, uh, Blue Dreams is playing very, very, very aggressive on Chris their angles. Up. So it's just like get a pick and then push onto site as a team very quickly and execute, and you you know you'll be fine because uh, Blue Dreams is getting really comfortable here with a lot of their plays. Looks like uh, Hags is able to take out 
Jack and Monkey there from Balcony drops down. Is taken out by Enka. So Crustle's getting the trade for his teammate. Brettley getting the trade in addition. And Saber's going to finish it off. Taking out Brettley. So it looks like Chris has to kind of push towards uh, B site here and at least try to prevent the bomb defusal. And it looks like it happens and Sabre goes down. So it uh, looks like it worked out in Sadie yeah, Boy's favor, but hey, that first. is because they were all there as a team. Yeah. Not this stuff where, again, well, I shouldn't say all, but they were there. They weren't playing for picks. I mean, it, they're kind of initially. The site. They, yeah, exactly. They, initially they were. And, and, you know, there obviously there are times where that is appropriate, but not in a situation there. And it's really hard to play for picks when you're, when you know, you're down four rounds yeah. as tees. you got to figure, okay, especially if that's what you've been doing in the past and it's not working. Correct. You need to just wait till you get a pick. Let Blue Dreams keep playing super aggressive, like the peaking long with an M4A1S, slow peaking. Get that first pick and then rush, just completely rush a site. Let your lurker give information, get some cleanup kills. But the get four, the other four of you should be going. Yeah. What do you say? Get those, the get the kills on the rotations. You know. Yeah, exactly. The but the other four of you should be pushing into site together. And last last round, Chris actually made a really good play there. So they didn't have any smokes, like I was saying, to smoke off heaven. So heaven was completely open, and they and uh. Uh, he was doing work with the op. Um, I think that was uh, Hacksaw was doing work with the op. Maybe his dino. And then Crisp actually pushed up and got the frag on uh, on on lower doors there he, because he didn't have a smoke to smoke it off. So he pushed up on it to get that initial kill. And that's something they haven't done before. Um, so it really worked out for him. So what they need to do is keep adapting to what's going on, what's being what's happening like per play. But Hacksaw. He's actually coming up on the flank right here. He's gonna get a nice pick on Jack and who actually the ball so that's uh, bomb, so that's bombed down. And now it's just up to Burt Macklin with the op on this outside. He's gonna get smoked out, flashed out, getting flanked by Saber, has no idea. Saber gets an easy kill here, picks up the op, free op for void, or free op for dreams, and also the ninth round. Vibrations. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, so um yeah, and uh you know again a nine six, not bad on overpass. But uh, make I don't here. think that's going to happen, is no. the thing. I mean, look, you, you're having a save here. You're buying two Tech 9s, what, a P250, two AKs, you're, and you're going against a team that has completely will outrange you. But 11-4 is, is doable. 11-4 so. is doable, but that's not, I mean, you want a lot better than that on Overpass. That's almost nuke territory. Yeah. And they should have they should have gone for the, they should have gone for the 10-5. They should not have tried to push this round out. You know, they clearly bought two AKs here. Um, and the rest of them saved. So, really, really poor decision. Um, I think. On their I think part. the hope is just, hey, you know, we just we we need to. Um, I was gonna say, you we can pick this hoping, one up, though. but you but be but you should exactly strategy. because this is a single elimination. This is the last oh, semi, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Is, this is it. This the, is you don't you, the the amount of risk people take in these. Um, can sometimes pay off, but a lot of times can get teams in sticky situations where that's it. You're going home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and there, there's no coming back from that. And uh, honestly, even in finals, man, you still got to be really careful because two teams are so on edge here. Yeah, definitely. Burt Macklin finally looks, opening up. Yeah, taking down Crussell there, or Crussells. Once again, Haxon is With the rotation. The and look, see, that's the lurk. That's the lurk with the rotation. But the CTs, that's people. the whole point, is the CTs generally don't have a lurker. Exactly. It's, I mean, that's kind of the point, is, is you know when you're getting completely flanked here, you're getting one tapped uh, by the CTs with the guns they took from you. I mean, this is this is this should be a kind of a pivotal point. Uh, whether they win or lose this match in experience as a team, they should realize, okay, so we need to change smoke. some things up. We cannot be lurked by the CTs. We need to be the lurkers here. We need to have a lurker be nice. very uh, efficient in what we're doing. Dude, and uh, they just haven't been able to, I think, get to that point yet. It looks like Monkey's taking down Dino. Yeah, but uh, Haxon's going to be able to make the trade, pushing on to a site there, getting oh, a second in addition, and Burt goes Macklin. down. And uh, it is going to be over as far as uh, that, uh, that hope there for a um yeah they the, almost the uh, the hope to pick up that last round and put it to a, a nine they almost five. had it i mean the thing is the amount of the amount of information that Haxon gained there i don't think it was relayed to his team because as soon as because he started rotating up to picnic they all went connector i'm thinking he thought they were in bathroom so his so his two guys stayed a and they didn't rotate until they died until his their one guy at b died so good job for static void getting the ball getting the bomb down making the initial picks to get the bomb down on the one guy they had kind of punishing blue dreams for not rotating quick enough finally smoked heaven which paid off a free kill 
but Dreams is just shutting them down here. Finally gets taken down. They're getting a double kill, and they're putting some pressure here on Heaven. But CSR already on the flank, coming up through Sandbags. Gets a nice double kill. They can't get the bomb down. Once again, flashed on the site. Burt Macklin does take out CSR. Yeah, but Dino finishes work. it up there, makes the work happen, and uh, that is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. It's an 11-4 matchup here. So, yeah, I mean, you're, you're I mean, kind of like you said, it's doable, but not really. I mean, it is, but it's, it's going to be very tough, very tough to switch over um, and kind of completely stop the momentum here uh, that Blue Dreams has. And and again, we it's kind of it's just weird, man. I mean, we uh, the way they were playing Blue Dreams, uh, again, I, sur I still think they feel that they're getting a run for their money, but, uh, but they're in a comfortable spot. I just feel like Void should have been doing um, a little bit better, uh, should have been keeping up, I should say, a little bit better than they have been. Um, I think they just lost a lot of momentum there after their first, after it turned into a 3-2 matchup. And then it kind of just went downhill from there. Yeah. Looks like Macklin getting that first pick there, taking down Krussels, who does push in, uh, does push in towards stairs over there. CSR is going to try to take out Macklin, avenge his teammate, deny this kind of uh, uh, sort of bizarre stairs position here. Um, very aggressive move there from Burke Macklin. I mean, it kind of pays off. He is able to get one pick, and it's not defending site. That's all right. Looks like uh, Monkey's able to take out CXR. Hacks and getting the trade, make, making sure a Monkey is denied any Good further progression there. He had great shot by uh, EMK Emkus there. Taking out Hacks and on B site. Bomb is going to be planted right now. Blue Dream's in a comfortable spot because they do get to plant, and uh, they are denying Balcony really any sort of, of aggressive right move. Uh, right there. So yeah, he's got it. They've got to, if they're going to be sitting there peeking like uh, heaven like that, they need to push on towards side. And that's exactly what they're deciding to do. Here, it looks like Dino's going down. Chris getting that first really quick pick there. Saber responding twice. Not only trading for Chris, but taking out EMK as well. And he's, he's going to be chased from Sandbags. Looks like CT has decided, okay, I'm going to have to try to defuse this. And it looks like he decides to flank around the back way no again, kick. but he's not going to have any sort of time. He's going to have to try to just get the kill, get a little bit of cash, and it looks like Bradley's able to do that and make that happen. But, but it doesn't really matter. Right. Blue Dreams is in such an advanced position now, and especially getting that, um, you know, when, when everybody's dead on both teams, any sort of benefit that you would have gotten, I mean, sure, you, get, you got a kill and that's good, but any sort of benefit you would have gotten if you're the CTs and the Ts plant the bomb, it's kind of negligible because, the, I mean, sure, you killed all the T's, but you all of you died too, so you have to save. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you have to save in kind of a painful position. I mean, you, heck, even look at this. They're not going to be able to buy next round. No, not even close. Not, not even close to like a full buy. And that's really painful. So, so they have to Blue Dreams has an incredible amount of insurance here. What are you saying? They have to not only win this round, but not die. Yes, exactly. They have to have a clean sweep. And even then, they can't fully buy. Crazy. They would have to have, one player would have to essentially ace this for them to be in a comfortable spot to buy kind of at least an opera or whatever they wanted to in a comfortable way. And that's probably not going to happen. And definitely to an extent going to be denied here. I mean, uh, Blue Dreams takes out uh, Haxon, taking out Macklin there. He's going to push uh, Dyna pushing a little bit on site, sees two. Not going to be able to get that first one. Chris takes him out, and Monkey takes out uh, Krussels as well. CSR being the only one to get a pick, however, Saber changes that reality gets two taking on crisp and emkus and they are going to be able to plant the bomb here does pick it up but before that bomb can be planted it is going to be finished off by hacks in there but they are still going to get that little extra boost of cash yeah it's looking pretty uh looking pretty bleak pretty honestly bleak, for a status yeah. for a static void i mean yeah geez like these these they're able to make some trades but the amount of kills like the amount of double kills coming from blue dreams like saber csr hacks on they're just getting these these multi kills every round because these guys are stacked up so close and it's just absolutely shredding them to bits. But Void is gonna be really nice up here on long and it's not gonna work out at all for them. They are already super. Yeah, red. CSR taking out Macklin and Monkey, at least getting the trade. But wow. both keep in mind Crisp get, taking out Crustles as well, but both of those are assisted. They actually kills. just out traded them. So it's like they they out traded them, but both of them are assisted kills, and these guys and the CTs are really hurting here. Well, yeah. I mean, you got and two players, one with 12 HP beat. and and 32 HP. Uh, sure, they might have. Uh, they're kind of conglomerated here. The hope uh, I think is uh, that uh, you know let's go a 
and can kind of completely throw them off here because we know that they got to be somewhere mid, somewhere stairs, somewhere bathrooms. And let's kind of just hope that they go B side, which is exactly seeming to be what happens. So I think the CTs are waiting for the bomb plant uh, and they're going to try to push. But firing that weapon might not have been the wisest choice. I mean, that is definitely something in the distance that the CTs are going to be able to hear. And it looks like they do pick up on it. They're going to be rotating towards over by bathrooms. Bomb is going to be planted. They know for sure. They've got to know for sure that it's going to be A now. And they are completely pushing here. Uh, strong three-man push uh, from bathrooms. Watch Saber on this flank again over here in the bathroom. Just there's just no HP though from the CT side, so they can't have or things armor. like, yeah, or I mean they cannot have these little slow peak kind of things. They have to be completely aggressive. And it looks like Haxon goes down there after T's getting two picks, Saber getting the last of the two. It looks like Dino's able to take out Jack and Monkey, so it is going to be Saber, uh, Dino, and Chris. Chris is not going to be able to defuse, and doesn't matter if the bomb explodes or not because Blue Dreams is able to finish off and after taking out Chris there. Saber getting the final kill. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a good try. They they were able to push on site and finally Maybe trade out somebody. Ego, right? Yeah, like with like, no armor, they got a lot of kills. They got a lot of kills, but still though, man, the problem is CS or I'm not CS. Uh, Blue Dreams is so ahead at this point. Mm -hmm. Whether it's eco rounds, I mean, whatever how you look at, I mean, it doesn't even matter. You we look at any of sort of the graphs, anything like that. I mean, it, they're so ahead at this point that. Um, that even if you do really well on an eagle like that, it's almost like it's not that much of a deal at all. No, no. This is not a close match by any means. I mean, it was, I feel like, at the beginning, and it could have been right now, but uh, Blue Dreams just goes to show they're just a consistent, you know, high-pressure playoff kind of team, and they're not going to let you exploit the, whatever mistakes they make for very long. No. And they're very consistent uh, in, in pretty much every tournament we've seen them in, and they're always kind of a final contender for the most part. So it looks like Macklin's staying in ABC, just trying to see what he can do uh, in that corner there. But that's kind of a, a tough uh, place to be, and especially if you don't have any teammate support from Balcony. But it looks like at the very least, he's able to get two trades there um, after a teammate kind of comes over and baits out just a little bit. But it's not going to make much of a difference as Brettley uh, being the, uh, the baiter there and Burke Macklin both have almost no HP, just going down instantly. And the bomb is planted giving the T's a little bit extra money here. And now you're in a kind of a sad spot because you hope to prevent the 15 instead of prevent the win. Yep. So at this point, it's like now we have to play to lose instead of playing to win. And it's it's, and it's hard play to not lose, sure, I should say. It's definitely. It's hard mentally to, to put oh, yourself in that mindset that you yeah. can, you know. Yeah, but hey, uh, they are playing at least a little bit aggressive here. But uh, even then, the, the, the completely the, uh, the push is favored in uh, Blue Dreams. Uh, it, it, well, I should say it's flavored towards Blue Dreams as Crustles get that last pick there. Haxon getting one as well. I believe Saber did. Uh, and that is going to be the end there, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the brackets again. So now it is going to be Blue Dreams and 10-gallon hats. 